Hey there. So my next guest, his story is so cool. Just a few years ago, about four, four and a half years ago, he was sitting around and according to him, that's not my words, he was a bad Rocket League player and he decided to just create something in that space. You fast forward to today, he's now the assistant general manager for a Rocket League esports team and he's doing incredible things. So I know you guys are going to love this episode. Everybody. Welcome back to the Gamerpreneur Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Bradford Carlton. Today, I have a very special guest with us. I have Mason Colstock. Hey there, Mason. How's it going? I'm doing good. Thanks for having me on here. Absolutely. Thank you so much for coming on with us today. Where do you hail from, Mason? Where am I from? Yeah. Uh, I'm from, uh, I live in Minnesota, actually. So um, I was originally from St. Paul, Minnesota, but now I res- I'm in um, Lakeville, Minnesota. So a right. little move from the cities. So hopefully you don't have too much snow at the moment. No, we got a lot of snow the other day, like almost a foot. So it's, it's, I'm used to the snow and the cold and being cold all the time. I, I did that for nine years in Ohio. Oh, yeah. <laughs> as, as close as I'll get. <laughs> all right. So Mason, I like getting the show started just right into it. So why don't you begin by just telling us a little bit about yourself, please? Yeah. So, um, I just graduated from uh, North Central University with a degree in sports management, sales, and marketing. But all my experience comes within esports. I wanted to be kind of my own owner. I wanted to like work for myself. So I started like tournament organizing for Rocket League. And then just from Rocket League, I, everything happened from Rocket League. I ended up. Um, meeting a guy named Arsenal, and then I ended up team managing for Upper 90 Esports, and that got me into the pro scene, and then now I'm here at RBG Esports. I love it. All right, uh, and there's going to be a lot to talk about before we kind of get yeah. into any of that. I uh, ask every guest a single question, so I'm going to ask you just like I ask everybody else. On a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being high, how weird are you, Mason? How weird am I? Yep. <sighs> I don't think I'm that weird. I- I'm going to go with four. I love it. I love yeah. that answer. You know, often I'll hear like, I'm a 17, I'm a 26. Like, yeah. Why? Because I like anime. Like, why, why would you say you're a four? Um, I don't know. I don't know what anything weird would be about me. Um, I play video games and I, I work. Yeah. That is There's a fantastic really answer. I, I actually do appreciate that. It's I'm trying to dispel the myth that gamers are weird just because we're gamers. So that's a yeah. perfect answer for me. Thank you. All right. So Mason, um, this is the Gamer Renewer podcast. So I do need your gaming cred. When did you first start playing video games? Um, I mean, I started playing really young. I think I started getting into PC video games around 2016 is when I got like a laptop. And that's when I really started playing uh like PC video games, like a lot, <laughs> but yeah, I'd go with 2016 for like really into video games. Okay. And is that roughly about when you started getting into esports as well? Or how'd that, how'd that come Yeah. Out? 2016 is probably when I got into esports. Um, I can tell my story about, uh, elevate league and how it started. Basically I was on a laptop with 30 frames playing rocket league. Cause I was, my friends were really into it. And I was really into um, the competitive side of it. So I wanted, I was really low ranked and I was competing in ESL. I bet you guys know what that is, but um, it was every Sunday at 2 PM. And I just like would ask friends every week if they wanted to play in it. And um, just, uh, I would, every time we get first rounded <laughs> regardless, cause we are really bad at the game and couldn't compete. And that's when, um, the esports side of it got into me and I was like, I just want to compete at my personal level. So I created elevate league where it's like a tier based system. So like based on your rank, you can only compete with people at your level and that's where everything started. Very cool. Okay. And we'll uh, dive into that a little bit more in here in a second. Um, other than rocket league, uh, anything else you play today? Yeah. I, I just like four months ago, I really started getting into Warzone and just like kill races and yeah i just like the whole aspect of it and 
I, I think it's one of the best battle royales out right now. All right. Very cool. Now, um, you've been really kind of playing for about five years. Um, so this, this next question may not be too applicable. Um, but if you had to pick one game as your all time favorite, which one would it be? Yeah, definitely, definitely rocket league. Um, that's where I'm based in and that's where I still am today. So that, yeah, rocket league. Okay, what about rocket league did it for you? Um, just so I'm an outcome from, I'm an athlete. So I played soccer in high school, all throughout high school, grade school, middle school. And then I, I played a year of college and, um, just the teamwork, team aspect, just working together as a team and, so, uh, rocket league was like soccer, kind of like soccer and mixed with some other sports. So I, I just liked how it was not really a sport game per se, but, um, yeah, just something I could compete in. Okay, fantastic. Now uh, let's let's hop over to the manure. I, I try not to do too much game talk in this show. It's more about the business side of things. Yeah. I so you. Um, you kind of gave us your background a little bit, but maybe you could go into a little more detail about starting your own league and then how you kind of ended up with RGB. Okay. Yeah. So um, I started out as a tour- tournament organizer. Like I said, I made my own league, and um, it was. Yeah, it was rock. It was a Rocket League league based on like the players' rank. So there was three divisions. You know, you had the the lowest ranks in the game. Uh, the the ranking system has changed so much. I don't even remember what the tiers were. But yeah, it's slow, mid tier, and then the highest level. And what really got it popular was like the mid tier. So I had a lot of people competing in the mid tier, like somewhere in like the two hundreds, wanted to compete in that. And that kind of just blew up from there, like uh, around, like after like two or three years, it just kept growing. And I was just focusing around that mid tier because that's what was popular. Um, The the lower tiers, they weren't in it enough to like be competitive. And then the higher tiers, they just wouldn't show up for like league matches and they would have like a sort of ego. So like the mid tiers where Elevate League really thrived. And then, um, yeah, like two or three years in that, I was just trying to keep growing that. And then I met a guy named Arsenal, and he wanted to start like his own esports team. And um, I was like, he he knew I like ran a league, and he's like, Do you just want to like help out on the side. And, and I was like, sure, I'll just be like a Discord moderator. So I was just like moderating his Discord, and he started bringing in these like really good Rocket League players that would just um, play for him for free. And they, they, we called it Upper 90 Esports because um, it was related to soccer, like Upper 90, like Upper 90, a, a goal to the Upper 90, like the top corner. Um, so he based her on that, and that kind of just blew up. So he, like, he was known for just getting really good players, and he wouldn't even have to have, like, a contract for them. And, like, they would just do really well. And the only reason why they would play for him is because they just liked Arsenal. They liked his personality. He treated it like a family and everyone really liked him. And when it started to take off, um, I actually, um, I dropped out of Elevate League. I gave my ownership up. I transferred it to one of my admins named Quad Burger. And um, I wanted to do like full time with Upper 90 Esports because I was really getting into it. And then, so yeah, he gave me like the general manager position. And about when that happened, um, he also let me be the Rocket League manager because I was really into Rocket League, so I knew a lot of the good players. And um, the first, it was like a couple seasons competing to try to get into the the, the major league. Um, there's the two leagues in Rocket League. There's the RLCS and the RLRS at the time. So the RLCS is the top. It was the top eight teams at the time, and then the RLRS was like, like the lower eight. So basically top 16 teams in North America. So yeah, we recruited a team. They just were grinding every day. And then the day came to the RLRS plans and they, they ended up making it. It, No one, no one believed we'd make it. And just like a random group of three guys just made it to the, made it to the pro league. And I ended up being the manager for them. And then after that, they they did really bad in the pro league. Um, I think they went one and seven. And then after that, 
it was like the second the second qualifier to get into the play-ins. We actually made it again with having a roster for two weeks. It was um we had demo cat, infinite, and melodic. And melodic was like a regular grand champion player, which was the top rank at the time. And like no one knew who he was. We just threw him in there. What happened? So our starter, Ghost, he ended up couldn't he couldn't make it. He got in like a car crash or something. So Melodic was like the sub. He comes in for the plans, and they end up making the they make the, they make the league in the plans with Melodic. So it was just an incredible story of how we made it. And we picked up Infinite like two weeks prior to, because we uh, Demo Cat was with us for two years for two seasons. So we just stuck with Demo. But yeah, I was like talking to Demo. I was like, how did, how did you do it? Like, how do you make it to the second level? But yeah, after that, it just, we started expanding, got into R6, and then um, got into, I think we just had, yeah, we had Magic, R6, and Rocket League. And then Arsenal had, like, he lost his passion for esports. So he kind of, he dropped out and gave ownership to Jake, who was the CEO. And so then I got promoted to CEO and he, he got um, CEO. And then from there, it kind of fell apart. I mean, Arsenal was kind of the rock for the org. Um, and then it was really hard to recruit players. But like while Arsenal was gone, we ended up recruiting like one of the first female Rocket League teams. And then there's like a, a women's car ball league. And they ended up winning the, uh, that, the first league. So that was like probably our biggest accomplishment after Arsenal left. But then, you know, funding was an issue. We were trying to get sponsors and partnerships. It wasn't really falling through with some of the partnerships we had. So um, we reached out to RBG, who actually wanted to acquire us before, like a year prior, um, when Arsenal was owner. And we ended up reaching out back out to them, and uh, we ended up merging with them. So then they gave me the assistant GM position. And now I'm at RBG. RBG. <laughs> seven months, yeah. Beautiful. That is an incredible story because we're only talking like the past four, four and a half years or yeah, so. Four years. And you know, you, you start your story with, I was a terrible player. <laughs> yeah. And now you're the, the co-GM of an esports team. Are yeah. you any better? <laughs> yeah, so actually as a player, um, uh, okay, I'd, I'd say, like, I can hang with, like, the good players. Like, right now, they made, like, a new rank. It's, like, Supersonic Legend. And then now it's Grand Champ 1 through 3. I'm Grand Champ 2 and 3, so I'm almost at the top level. If I gr I don't grind as much, I probably could be the top level. But um, if you see these trophies right here, um, I have three of them. Uh, there's a land in Minnesota called the Player Up. It's, like, the biggest land in Minnesota. They have a ton of events. So I've won the player up rocket league tournament three times in a row. Beautiful. So, <laughs> so I okay. kind of tend to, you know, do competitive still. Sure. Now, what is it like helping to to run an esports team? Because it's not just, you know, the three guys or anybody. It's it's, it's a bigger organization. And you know, just a couple of years ago, you were a bad player who wanted to have other people to play with and create your own league. So, like, how is that now running this thing? Um, so upper 90, it, it wasn't organized at all. Like as, as much as RBG is RBG is way more professional. There's more like defined rules and con contracts that keep people in line. Upper 90, we didn't have any contracts. It was all kind of just like a, it was like a family. It was just a community. Um, so on upper 90, I didn't really, I did like a lot of everything. I just did whatever I could. Um, I wanted to make it organized, like making calendars and stuff, but um, RBG in particular right now, um, my role as assistant GM, I kind of just do whatever um, Swan, the co-founder and um, general manager, I kind of just do whatever he says, tells me to do. But um, right now what they have me doing is um, I'm running the academy roster. So we just branched like a new academy team and so i'm managing like a rock league team and an apex legends team right now for our academy rosters and then i do a little bit of um 
website development and then uh league of legends scouting that's what they're having me do right now so very cool okay so what goes into managing a team then okay so for rocket league in particular um i had different experiences at both with managing a professional rocket league team basically it was a lot of talking to other managers and getting scrims together that was like the biggest thing just organizing scrims every week um also just getting like your team into community events um signing them up for like just random community tournaments you just got to keep everything organized i had everything on like a calendar and then just got to keep everyone informed um right now with my academy roster i actually help them with coaching as well um so coaching is just a whole another thing you do like replay review and then obviously everything with organization so Okay. Was it difficult to step into these roles or are you sitting there like, oh crud, oh crud, oh crud, before you have to like talk to anybody? Um, I didn't feel like I was qualified in upper 90 esports as a manager. Like, honestly, I was like, because the managers that they had were, most of the managers were retired pros. So it's kind of like starstruck talking to like retired pros asking for scrims. Um, it's just weird for me. Like, I felt more important than I was, you know, talking to these people okay um now like mason you've you're living the dream i hope you understand that right there's there's millions of people out there who wish they could get into esports who are probably starting out the same way you were who don't think they could have ever competed or could have ever done anything like this but you were able to do it what makes you different what makes you special or unique that you were able to like kind of push through all of that in order to get here I just, I like getting stuff done. Um, I'm very motivated. Um, I just, uh, like normally when you ask people to do things in a volunteer position, it's hard to get people to actually do things. What makes me different is I actually get them done. So I just like to keep things consistent on social media, keep things organized and just, yeah, keep grinding and keep getting, getting those numbers up. I like to, yeah, just grind it out. Okay. Now on the path to, to learning all these different positions that you're, you're now, you know, wearing the hat for, did you have to turn into, or did you turn to any resources to kind of learn it? Or did you have any mentors? How did that work? I learned a lot just by myself, just research. Um, when it was coming to the tournament organizing, uh, there's actually a discord for like a bunch of tournament organizers in Rocket League. Um, so I'd reached out to a lot of the bigger ones with like certain questions we organized around Smash GG. It's like a tournament hosting platform. And, um, you know, a lot of questions came from that. But I also learned from people that just wanted to help me. Um, I had, like, people that knew Smash GG really well and knew how to organize brackets. And they'd, like, show me how to do stuff. So I was honestly learning as I went, like, the whole way. Um, yeah. Okay. Just learning, learning from other people. Do you feel like you belong where you're at yet? Or do you still kind of have a little bit of that imposter syndrome? Um, right now, well, I'm not getting paid at RBG, but they're getting close to the part where we're potentially going to get paid within the next year, year or so with um, investments and partnerships. But um, right now, I feel like I'm in a good position. I don't feel like an imposter. I feel like I have a lot of qualifications based on my experience. Um, and yeah, yeah. <laughs> Okay, very cool. Mason is not the imposter. <laughs> um, you know, it was only about four and a half years ago or so you you started out on this journey. If you could go back in time and you could talk to yourself back then and kind of give yourself some advice or, you know, guide you tell yourself the, the path that you were going to take, what was the one thing you wish you had known? Oh, um, man, I wish I would have have things more professional everything was when i was at elevate like the first year or two it was very like unprofessional i'd say like um with rules and stuff like people a lot of smurfs getting in that kind of ruined the league in a sense just like better players that are playing on a different account um i don't know i just wish i would I, w I just wish it was more professional Okay. Now, do you have any advice for anybody who might be wanting to follow in your footsteps? Because like I said, there's, there's millions of people out there wanting to do exactly what you've done. Like, what would you tell people like, you know, that you've blazed this trail for? 
definitely surround yourself with people that are as motivated as you and want to work hard to get to the top. Um, not a lot of people are going to like believe like at upper 90, you know, we all, we all believe that we could like get to the top and have like a top tier team in North America. Um, just, you just got to find other people that have the same passion Just surround yourself with people uh, around people that have the same passion. Okay. I love it. Now, Mason, um, at this part in the show, I get a little bit personal, if that's all right. Um, you see, I, I believe that we learn the most in our life from our failures, not necessarily our successes, because when you succeed, you may not necessarily realize what got you there, but when you fail, you, you can figure that out right quick in order to be able to, to move forward and then succeed the next time. So I'd like to ask you, what is something that you consider is your biggest failure in life? And what did you learn from it? Biggest failure in life. Wow. Um, I can't really think of like my biggest failure. I, I mean, I can think of my biggest failure in esports. Sure. What was that? Uh, with Elevate. Um, it, like, you get back to the smurfing, there was like the first season, there was like a, a smurf that no one caught until like the finals. And it kind of just blew up in the Discord. Everyone was yelling at each other. And um, what I learned is from that is we had to get like better ways to track ranks and make sure that everyone's at the right rank and eligible to compete. Um, but uh, yeah, I honestly had like the people that really wanted to, that were cracking down on these people. I had them help me. They're like, Hey, I'll just like look at all the ranks for you and look into them. And these kids that they had to be like, yeah, kids or something. They like would look, they'd look into like hundreds of ranks and get back to me, uh, like, like based on the registration page. I was like, wow. Yeah. I don't even have to pay these guys. They're just very passionate to finding these guys and making sure that they don't compete. Okay. Wonderful. Um, on the flip side of that question, you know, as opposed to failures, what is something that you're working to improve on in yourself today? How are you moving yourself forward? Um, the biggest thing for me is I want to be more consistent. Um, and this comes a lot with social media. So with the academy roster, I want to have a tweet every day for um, the teams. Uh, just, yeah, keeping things consistent. Yeah, consistency, it's huge for me right now. That's what I want to be. Okay. Now, um, kind of one more question, and then we'll start bringing this in for a landing. How, how are you able to get so many people to work for free? Like it, it blows my mind that people are like throwing themselves at different organizations in order to work for free. And like every other industry I've ever been in, like, they're like, no, you got to pay me. Yeah. It's just, it's just people that are, look, have that passion, like I said, and then they're looking for experience. They want, um, experience on like a professional team. Um, at, like with Elevate League, people would come and go, they'd be like, I can do this for you. I can do this. But then you'd like never hear from them. And the, the true staff members are the ones that stick around and, you know, they have the same passion. So Quadberger, the one I handed Elevate League to, he was with me for three years. He helped him with everything. Um, he never missed a league night every Friday and Saturday. He was always there. And, you know, he was looking for that experience and he ended up, you know, taking over and then owning another org, uh, Peak Esports. Beautiful. All right. This has been a fantastic interview, Mason. How do people find you? How do they find RBG? How do, like social media handles, everything, please. Yeah. So my gamer tag is Maxi, but um, my actual gamer tag is um, Mexican Diabetes. So the fun thing about that is um, I was only, like, I'm only a quarter Mexican, but uh, I have type one diabetes. So when I was four years ago, I just like combined it as a joke and then it ended up um, being my name throughout. And then I shortened it to Mexi to make it more professional. Um, so I think you just Mexi followed me the other day and I'm like, who's this? Oh yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> it's, it's, it's Mexican. Well, so it's Mexican diabetes on all socials just so I don't have to have like Mexi RL or something. So I just kept Mexican diabetes as like my ad, but my name is like Mexi. So, all right. Yeah. Very cool. Now, as we wrap this up, do you have any final thoughts you want to share or anything I didn't ask? You think we still need to cover? Um, just, uh, you can follow RBG. Yeah. RBG underscore esports, um, on Twitter. I'm pretty sure it's RBG underscore esports on all social medias. We're, we're up and coming. 
All we're right. gonna we're gonna be at the top. Fantastic. I'm looking forward to seeing you guys there. Mason, thank you so much for coming on with us today. I genuinely do appreciate this. No problem. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. And for everybody else, I'm gonna remind you all: don't be just a gamer, be a gamerpreneur.